So I'm going to kind of continue on with uh, working on this project I was working on previously where we were building a React application using Create React App. And I'm going to talk about deploying this uh, application to S3 and CloudFront now. So you can deploy a static site if you make it, it's just a completely static site, meaning that it only contains HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and whatever like static assets like images. If you have a static site like that, you can deploy it to something that is essentially just a file server. Um, so you'll notice when you run npm uh, run build, and this is just running Webpack scripts. This is um, this is part of the Create React app starter, but chances are your site is pretty similar if you're doing something with React. So you're gonna run this uh, Webpack command to build it, and Webpack is essentially just gonna spit out a um, a set of static assets you can see here it threw it in the build directory and um, that's really all there is to your site so here we're in this build directory now and I'm just gonna tree it so you can see everything in here you've got the static assets which is the CSS and the JavaScript then you've got the index.html and I happen to have a lot of images in this website and this is the website I was developing as part of some tutorials that are also up on YouTube but to make a long story short I, I'm gonna um, I'll just show you well, I'm gonna start a static server with HTTP server this is a node module that you can install globally and it's look it's serving on localhost uh, 8081 right now so this is the whole site right so this is a site to help you build quadcopters but basically this is the entire site right so um, this is all there is to it it's static files there's no server component as long as you can get the files to the browser so uh, what we're gonna I'm gonna do is walk you through how I set this up and so I have a domain here called FPV build calc that's what this site is uh, called and then um, in my in my DNS records I have a, a redirect from the at which is just no domain or subdomain and it's redirecting um, FPV build calc.com to www FPV build calc.com and then the other thing is I've got a C name pointing to the cloud front address so I'll go over CloudFront in a second. But the first thing you do is you want to create a bucket in S3. So you want to create a bucket in S3 with the exact same name as the domain you want to serve it under. In this case, it's www.fpvbuildcalc.com. And you can see I already have the site up live. It's up. It's being served from this bucket directly right now. Um, the other thing you want to do is under permissions, you create a bucket policy and you want to set the bucket policy to allow all public read and you can google this or just look for a tutorial um, on um, or look for a link to the tutorial on doing this there's a I'll post a link in the video but you basically just need uh, this bucket policy to make your objects readable so that somebody can just publicly access your site and then the other thing you need to do under properties is set up static web hosting and point it to the index.html so that's your actual web page that is going to point to your JavaScript file, this index.html. That's going to link up your JavaScript that contains React and, and your CSS. Um, and then when you create the um, bucket and you enable static web hosting, you'll get the endpoint address. And this endpoint address is where you can actually look directly at your, um, your site code or your site uh, assets. Now the thing is you don't want to do this to point your domain directly at this S3 bucket because you want to put CloudFront in front of it. And CloudFront is really what is meant to serve websites. It um, does a couple things. It does caching and it also compresses your files. So you'll notice here I loaded up this um, website and then I turned on the network tab and in the network tab you can see the main JavaScript file and the main CSS file come through and they're not gzipped. This is just text CSS and this is text JavaScript. And you definitely don't want to do that because this is almost half a megabyte of just plain JavaScript code. And um, if you had larger CSS, that could be an issue too. We don't in this site, but that could also be an issue. Um, so you want to be gzipping all of your gzippable files, and CloudFront will do that for you. So let me go to the CloudFront thing where I set this up. This is a uh, what I did was create a new um, CloudFront distribution and you can see 
when I created this, it gave me a domain name, and that's actually what I have my C name pointed to in my DNS configuration. So I did two things. I created a S3 bucket, and I put all my assets there, and then I created a CloudFront distribution, and I pointed that to the S3 bucket. So when you create this CloudFront distribution, you're going to give it C names that you want to serve it from, and you have an actual origin, and then you have a domain name that CloudFront serves on. So you can see CloudFront is actually um, serving from this domain, and we're just cnaming it at www.fpvbuildcalc.com. And now inside of your CloudFront distribution, you have to link it to your S3 bucket, and uh, Amazon CloudFront will actually do some kind of auto configuration, and it'll find buckets that you have enabled for static websites. But the problem that I faced when I did this is it picked the wrong origin here. So you have to be very careful that this endpoint matches exactly what is in here. So I had to go in and kind of edit this file and then change this origin domain name to point to where it's actually being served from because the one that Amazon pre-filled it with was incorrect and that caused uh, some problems. Um, so as far as that goes, that's all you have to do is get that pointed to your S3 bucket. Um, if you want to clear the cache, you can run cache invalidations. So I'll just usually go and do something like this every time I deploy new code. It'll invalidate all the caches everywhere. And um, yeah, it's actually that easy. So you're, you're going to get your, um, your new, under your origin, you'll get your domain name. And that's what you actually put in the C name here. And then when you go to fpvbuildcalc.com now, it's going to go to CloudFront. And you'll see these assets are now gzipped. So that's content encoded gzipped, and um, this HTML page is gzipped. So everything, it, it's going to be smaller. Like if you compare the size, this is now 128 kilobytes compared to 473 kilobytes before. So you got a pretty good saving in size there from CloudFront gzipping it for it. The other thing that CloudFront does is it has multiple servers around the world. So if you have a person visiting your site in Europe, they're going to hit their local CloudFront site or distribution server in Europe, and then they're not going to actually come to US East, which is where this S3 bucket has to be happens to be located. It's in US East, so it'll actually hit a CloudFront distribution, and that's what that's what this whole caching part does. It's going out to these cache servers, and CloudFront is is pushing out the assets to them to those local areas. Um, it's pretty cool. It lets you monitor. Uh, the refers so people are coming from Facebook or whatever and and they're coming directly here um, it's it's pretty nice it's pretty cool so anyway that's the other thing I did not go over was actually syncing up your um, code to s3 it's fairly simple though I'll post a link of how to set this up you just need to put in your s3 credentials and you'll set this up on the command line so you can just run a command and I'll just run this here just to just to um, show you guys how easy it is. It just uploads everything in a directory you want. And um, so it's essentially like a five second deployment process. So anyway, that's it. That's uh, going over S3 and uh, CloudFront for hosting a static React site. Thanks for watching.